As we've said previously, when we're dealing with light, and mainly the wave aspect of light, we see that waves, when they travel through different mediums, they tend to diffract, or they bend around corners. And it's actually one of the more interesting things that happens with light, uh, personal opinion, obviously. However, this does have some interesting uh, consequences. And we saw the Young's double slit experiment as a really good example of this diffraction. Now what we're going to actually do is look at a little bit more of a complicated case of this. Actually, it's technically more simple, but conceptually I think it's a little bit more complicated. Well, what happens is when we actually look at diffraction, we can start to see relationship um, that forms between the opening of whatever the thing travels through, the light travels through, and the wavelength of the light. For instance, if we start off with something uh, an opening, say a slit in a piece of paper or something that has a diameter or a radius or something that's on the order of the wavelength, where the opening is the or on the order of the wavelength, we'll get a very nice pattern that comes out. However, we get something that as the opening opens larger and larger and larger, that we get a pattern that gets more closely related to the incoming. So if our opening is much larger than our wavelength, then we tend to not get a lot of diffraction on the side. And this is the reason why when we see light coming through, we don't normally see light diffracting when it goes through like a door frame, for instance. However, the bending, the reason why it bends is based on Huygens' principle, which tells us that if we were to look at a light source, and we look at the spots at the very edge of the light source, say the, the light comes in and it stops there, that any point along this edge, will we can treat it as nothing more than a bunch of uh, small little spherical light sources. So each point along here would create its own little spherical uh, light source, which we call a wavelet. And it's these wavelets. How these wavelets interact with the opening will determine how much it spreads out. Well, one of the interesting consequences of this is that if we look at this, this first wave here, this little wavelet, and this wavelet here, and all the ones in the middle, that as they radiate out and they get further and further out, they're going to start to actually interact. So we're going to deal with what's called single split, single slit refraction. It's so like the Young's double slit experiment, except for this time we're only going to use a single slit. So when the two, when the wave comes in, when the light comes into a single slit, different parts are going to interfere with each other. And we're going to get a similar pattern. So very similar picture to what we have before. We can set up our single slit this time. Again, we have our angle theta, depending on where we're looking along this wall. And again, if the light comes straight in, we're still going to get a maximum in the middle. However, the pattern that we're going to get is going to have this wonderful little intensity curve. And this is a measure intensity. So the middle is going to be really bright, but we're going to get these bumps again, this interference pattern. And we're going to get a very similar equation. But we got to be careful because this equation says that m lambda, the integer number times the wavelength, where m is plus or minus 1, plus or minus 2, we'll notice that 0 is not included in this case, is equal to a, the opening, times the sine of the theta. And the theta we're talking about this time is actually not the bright light, it's the dark band. So we got to be, we have to be careful, it looks almost identical to the double slit, except for we only have, we don't have the zero, and we're also talking about the dark band. So that's what we're going to get when we get a, a single slit um, interference. And there are a lot of arguments of what happens, and if you divide this thing up into two different regions, any region up here is going to interact with the region down there so that this dark band, when the path length varies by an integer wavelength, we're going to get destructive interference. So the argument is very similar to the previous one, just slightly, just some very few modifications, and we're not going to actually go over it again. So just remember, uh, when you're dealing with single slit uh, interference, that the equation for the dark lines is very similar to the bright lines for the Young's double slit experiment, except for we're reversing some roles and we're eliminating out the zero case.